executive consultants, you're welcome. So today we are going to look at something uh, called, uh, we are going to look at a standard and uh, basically it's uh, preparation of consolidated financial statements. And we may look at uh, several standards uh, that will be guiding us on how to prepare these consolidated financial statements. So if you are an accounting student who is a finalist and you are a potential CPA student for the financial reporting paper, you are welcome. Uh, it may not be the exact thing that you, the CPA student will probably study, but having the basics that uh, you must have had at your bachelor's makes it easier for you to do the paper financial reporting, that's I think paper eight. So we are going to go through the different procedures of how to come up with the considered financial statements. And uh, we are going to use standards that is uh, IFRS 10, the considered financial statements that is going to be basically giving us the procedures, the rules, the do's and the don'ts of uh, preparing these consolidated financial statements and we will combine it with uh, IS27, the separate financial statements, because we get to know that uh, when we are preparing with group accounts, we get different financial statements. And then later on, we'll be bringing a little bit of business combination, and we will see goodwill coming on board. So like we know that uh, without control, no one apparent in this case, cannot prepare the consolidated financial statements. And we very know that uh, it is the parent that is recommended or that is put to task by the IFRS 10 to come up with the considered financial statements. But the major reason the standard puts aboard is the parent must have control. So if the parent doesn't have control but has influence, that is something else like we will see later on in our AS28. But for now, we are going to focus on the considered financial statements and basically we are going to put our focus on uh, IS27 and then IFRS3. But the major fact is control because when we have control, then we can do full consolidation. So I'm going to go through an example, an illustration that we are going to be using to remind ourselves on how to come up with. So before us, we have the parent and the subsidiary. And when I talk about the parent and the subsidiary, the right and the real life example is Facebook with WhatsApp. So they are telling us that Facebook has those different uh, items under their assets and uh, equity plus liabilities. And the same thing is given to us by WhatsApp, who is a subsidiary in this case. So what we are looking at right now is separate financial statements. And now we are going to see how to use these two separate financial statements to come up with one financial statement. And in this particular, the consolidated financial position. That's not a financial position. So we are going to go through the different procedures, the different workings, and then we'll be able to get to know how to come up with the consolidated financial statements, in particular, the consolidated statement of financial position. So they are telling us the statement of financial position, 31st December 20X9. And then uh, we'll look at the additional information that on first 20X3, Facebook acquired 300 shares. 3,000 shares of WhatsApp. So, and then they're also going to tell us that at that date, the balance on WhatsApp pretend earnings was 8,000. And then, and the fair value of the non-controlling interest was 3,500. And then they are telling us that at an impairment review at year end showed a fall in the value of goodwill to of 1,800. So we are going to see that, how are we going to use all these that we've highlighted? Because without them, without us finding the real 
workings behind them, we may not be able to come up with what the question is telling us to prepare a consolidated statement of financial position of Facebook at 31st December 20X9, assuming that it's group practice to value the NCI using the full goodwill method. Like we will see. So I'm going to open my Excel sheet and that's where I'm going to be working out the different workings that we need for us to come up. But I must tell you that uh, the first thing that you, who is a student and you're listening to me right now, the first thing for you to pass this kind of question is you have to know that assets and liabilities of both the parent and the subsidiary are going to be added on a line, on a, on a, on a, a line by line basis. So unless there are provisions that are put under on the additional information, but if there is none, just like you can see here, then that means you're simply going to get a line by line basis and you add the assets of the parent and the subsidiary. And then you will also do a line by line basis to add the current liabilities and the non-current liabilities of the parent and the subsidiary so that you can be able to move on with the rest of the workings that you will need for you to finally come up with a financial statement that is required of you. So when I open my Excel sheet, I have already worked out the, I've put the procedures that you must go through and we are simply going to be entering in digits for us to arrive at the workings. So the first working that is always given to us is to determine the group structure. They will always give you a question and sometimes they will give you the percentages. Sometimes they will not give you the percentages. So in this case, we don't have the percentages. So we do not know how much does, how much of control does Facebook has over WhatsApp? So what do we find? How do we find out the net assets? How do we find out the group structure? We simply look at the question. They are telling us that Facebook acquired 3,000 shares of WhatsApp. But you can see that WhatsApp has shares of 4,000. So if WhatsApp has shares of 4,000, then that means we need to do some little bit of mathematics for us to arrive at the shares, the, the control in, in terms of percentages. So we'll put the 3,000 the 3, shares, and then we divide by the 4,000 shares, and then we will multiply this with a hundred percent. And then we'll get 75%. So this means that for us to get to know the subsidiary or the NCI for the subsidiary, we'll simply say, let's just put this in real, in real terms. Let's just put play again with a, a hundred. And then we'll simply get to know that for us to get the one for the subsidiary will be 100 minus the 75. And then that would mean that our Facebook, who is a parent in this case, has control of 75%. And the subsidiary in this case, who is WhatsApp, has you know, NIS NCI of uh, 25. So we've determined the group structure. After determining the group structure, the other thing for us to do is to determine the net assets. Uh, IFRS then uh, takes in, puts in place that the net assets uh, are going to be, that I will be looking at, will be using, will be the net assets uh, of the, and then we'll simply compare it with the share capital and reserves of the subsidiary. Why should we do that? It's because when we are doing our calculations, we should include the share capital and reserves of the subsidiary so that they are effectively canceled out with the investment into the subsidiary for us to arrive at goodwill like we'll see later on. So we will not use the known net assets of uh, current, of current uh, assets minus the current liabilities, but we'll simply use the share capital and reserves of the subsidiary like we are going to do. So we are seeing that we have share capital and then we have the reporting debts and then the acquisition and then the post acquisition debt. So what is the acquisition? The acquisition is basically the day that we acquire this subsidiary. So when you look here, we are seeing that uh, at the balance, 
at that date, the balance of the WhatsApp retained earnings was 8,000. So that it means we are going to come and then we put our 8,000 here. And then we will automatically know that because the cost is, uh, the cost is 12,000, so we'll simply say 12 minus the 8,000, then that would give us 4,000. And uh, we'll have arrived at the total of, uh, the total, the total of uh, 12. And then once that is done, we'll simply come to the reporting date. And then we get to know, of course, we can see that our reporting date, we have uh, shares of 4,000 and we return earnings of 12. So we will come and then we put the 4,000 for the shares, and then we'll put the 12,000 for the retained earnings at the reporting date. And then we'll also get the addition to find out how much of net assets we have. So once we do that, you can clearly see that we have reporting date 12, 16,000, and then at requisition 12 meaning our net assets have increased from 12 to 12, and then our post acquisition profit is 4,000. Once all that is done, we'll move on to calculate goodwill. Goodwill can be calculated using the full goodwill method or the other methods, depending on the question that has been set. So assuming like in the question they have given us that we use full goodwill method, and this is the method we use for full goodwill method. So it starts with a cost, and by now we know that the cost was 12 million, so 12,000, and then uh, we get to less the percentage share of the profits of the parent, rather, on the net assets at acquisition. So we'll simply bring in our negative because we want to get the less bit, and then we'll say the 75%, the 75% multiply with the then we'll have our 9,000 for us to arrive at the goodwill of the parent, which we'll get by simply saying, uh, when you're using a calculator, it will be the cost minus 9,000. But because I'm using Excel, allow me to use the formulas that Excel gives me. So if you've used your calculator, you can see that you get 3,000. And that will be the goodwill for the parent share. And then the other bit we'll find out is you need to find out the fair value of NCI at acquisition. When we come back to our question, they are telling us that the fair value of NCI was 3,500. So we'll come and then we put the 3,500 as our fair value at acquisition. And then we less the percentage of the subsidiary on the net assets at acquisition. We'll still do the same thing. We'll bring in a negative so that we can say that 25% multiply with the value at acquisition and we'll have the 3000 and we'll use this to arrive at the goodwill of the NCI. We'll still do the same and we will say 35 and then, so that is the goodwill, but they told us that goodwill impaired. So if goodwill impaired, then that means you have to less it. And uh, that value was uh, 1,800. So we'll, for us to arrive at the total good, we will say sum of uh, the parents' goodwill. Then we bring on board the goodwill at NCI. And then we less this for us to arrive at the total goodwill of 1,700. So in our next video, we are going to continue from there to find out the NCI and the group retained earnings, and we'll be able to come up with our consolidated statement of financial position. Executive consultants, you're welcome.